happy Valentine's Day! Yes, it is once again February 14th, the time when lonely hearts get even more lonely and those with partners tend to buy extraordinary amounts of chocolate and flowers to make up for all the shit things they've done throughout the year. It is also my anniversary of when I met my husband. So today, to celebrate Valentine's Day, we are going to be making a vintage Valentine's themed apron. The apron is going to be based on this image I found here because oh my gosh, how cute is that? And we're going to be making it from one old red curtain, some white lace I got in my massive van haul of cosplay supplies. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. And I have made a PDF downloadable pattern. Now, after this video is done, this pattern is going to be going up on my shop, so feel free to go over there and check it out. Or you can hit that subscribe button because when we finally reach a thousand followers, I am going to make my own website and nearly all the patterns that I have up for sale on my Etsy shop are going to become free to download off that website. Anyway, that's the long and the tall of it, and let's get going. So we stuck, we cut, we ironed, we placed, we pinned, we cut some more, we decided a vintage project should be sewn on a vintage machine, and we sewed, until it looked like this. Yes, it was a bit small, but I was proud, even after Ben told me it looked like a weird loincloth. And please enjoy this dramatic recreation of what happened next. Ah, good. Well, while that finishes uploading, I'd better finish making that thumbnail. Well, shit. Thing is, when looking at that thumbnail image, I realised I'd made this apron completely and utterly wrong. So this is how you should do it. The first thing I did was stick all the PDF pattern pieces together and then cut them all out on the fabric as instructed. No, there wasn't an iron involved in this one. Why? Because I was angry sewing at the time. That's also my excuse for this terrible camera angle, by the way. My apologies if you can't quite see what I'm up to. Because the red material I was using was quite thin, see-through and not very strong, I cut a duplicate piece of everything out of the cream cotton backing that went with the curtain. This isn't needed if you're going to use the pattern, it's just a structural thing that I found for me because I was using rather rubbish fabric. So the first thing I did was pin these duplicate pieces together and then overlocked them because the other thing with my red fabric is it frayed seriously badly, so literally the overlocking was just to prevent fraying. Of course, once all that overlocking is done, remember to give your pieces an iron before moving on to the next step. I had only overlocked the bottom two angles of the heart, so not the curvy round bits at the top of it. I'd done this while facing right sides together, so having turned it the right way round and giving it an iron to keep it flat, I now overlocked the top edge, which would be be hidden inside the waistband of the apron. Next, I took my pretty white lace and pinned it around the outside bottom edges of the heart. I made sure to leave enough seam allowance at the top that it would catch in the waistband because I didn't just want the random raw edges of lace flapping about. That would be just asking for it to all unravel. Really? You're sleeping on top of my sewing machine? Do you not want me to do any more work? And then, making sure to use white thread, I top stitched the lace down onto the apron. Next, I ran a gathering stitch along the top of the heart. Luckily, my sewing machine comes with one of these built in, so it was super easy. I'm gonna use this to gather the fabric and create that ruffle look like we see in the picture. Something my original apron was definitely missing. I'm gonna gather this down to one side of the waistband, probably the underneath side, stitch that down, and then I'm gonna top stitch the top with the ties on. Pulling the ends of the thread, I gathered the fabric until it neatly fit inside the waistband. I then pinned it all in place, including folding over the raw edges of the waistband and hiding the raw edges of the apron itself so that I could top stitch it all down. I then decided that I was going to pin the apron strings in there as well so that I could just do one row of top stitching and call it done for the day. So this is what the gathering looks like now it is finished before I fold over the waistband. What I am going to do so that I can just top stitch the waistband down around everything is I'm just going to do some top stitching on the ties basically. I was actually just 50-50 as to whether or not I, you know, fold them in half really but I don't think I really like that look even though the back of them is white and the front is red. I think what I'm going to do is just top stitch along the edges and then gather this in and slot it in there kind of, you know like that. I have to admit this is a relatively easy project and a relatively easy pattern and I'm also going to say this already looks better than my last one. If you do get the PDF pattern I will say now that I definitely designed the ties to be folded in half. I know that I haven't chosen to do that but you know sometimes I like to experiment on my own personal projects. However definitely if you get it 
Fodman half, trust me, it'll be easier and probably look better than mine turned out. Next, those straps were pinned on and the top of the waistband folded down over all the ruffles and therefore enclosing the whole thing. One last lot of top stitching and it was finally a wearable garment. But hold on, we're not done yet. So this side came out absolutely beautifully and as you can see, all this is looking beautiful as well. In fact, it's looking a lot better than that thing over there. This one, a little bit too messy, but we're not gonna redo it because that would mean I'd have to unpick all of this and that just seems like, you know, a lot of stuff to do. One last thing, which is just to make it match the picture, is to add a little bit of ribbon around here to highlight the heart area, just like this. Voila! Pink little hemming tape, ribbon, whatever you want to call it, all done and just needs hand stitching down. And I'm going to give you guys a real quick tip. The ends of this tape tend to fray really, really badly. So what I do when I'm using it is I get a bit of very cheap, like literally mine costs two pound fabric glue, just dab the ends and let it dry for five minutes before I hand stitch it all down. And yes, I'm hand stitching it rather than machine stitching it because I want to make my stitches as invisible as possible. And thus begun another night of hand stitching. Do you guys notice a pattern with my work, like mostly that I always seem to work when it's dark and very, very rarely when it's actual daylight? Me too. Also, I've currently lost my small thread scissors and if anyone spots in this video where I put them down, I'd be extremely grateful if you could let me know in the comments down below because I will be darned if I can find them. And this was filmed like a week or two ago, so they're definitely missing. What do you think of the finished apron, Lily Cat? Do you like it? No opinion, just happy to have an ironing board to sleep on. It's okay, I understand. Well guys, wasn't that a journey? Okay, so we have out again our mannequin of shame, which is still featuring my failed bloom cosplay that uh, you can see in this video just here. But otherwise, I've just put the first apron I made on it and we're gonna quickly run through all the things I did wrong. So firstly, the heart shape is correct, but too small and not gathered at the top. Secondly, I used what should have been the waistband as a pocket and did not cut it on the fold, just cut it like flat, don't do, not a good idea. And thirdly, it just doesn't look like a heart, it looks like a weird triangle, or as Ben said, a um, crotch pad, penis guard, loincloth, that's the word I'm looking for, it looks like a, a loincloth with frills because apparently loincloths need frills these days and then let's look at mine so as you guys can see i've put on my nice 50s dress here and we have a 50s style heart apron so this one does have frills it also has ribbon i did sew a button just right at the top here where the two pieces of ribbon meet just to cover up the ends because I, I couldn't get them to line up well and i was just really annoyed that it was right in the center so i sewed a little flower button on it to hide it and I'm happy. I did use white frills and I used lace. I have put a thing in the digital pattern which is available to download on my Etsy shop saying the suggested width of the frills. However, though I've used lace, I don't see any reason why you guys couldn't just use fabric as the original picture I think does show it using fabric. Obviously, I also hand stitched the pink ribbon that's around the edge. I actually really like this effect. So it's red, pink and then white. And I think the transition is quite nice. But you know what? If you guys end up making it, please tag me on Instagram because oh my gosh it's just gorgeous and I want to see what other color variations people can come up with. Other than that guys have a wonderful wonderful Valentine's Day. I hope you're spending it with your loved ones or at least maybe being able to call them considering that we're still in lockdown and that is a thing this year. Maybe next year we won't be and we can actually go out and enjoy ourselves a little bit more. Otherwise guys if you liked this video don't forget to hit that like button and please subscribe for more updates. I promise you there is a lot more crafting videos coming up. I know I've been very talky lately and I apologize for that but sometimes it just helps to talk and have a little bit of a break because you know those 12 days of cosplay christmas i did fairly exhausting <laughs> so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video like subscribe comment any questions that you have down below and i will see you on wednesday have a absolutely stunning beautiful valentine's day and if nothing else i love you guys for supporting me so thank you very much and well bye